Great, another day, another video. How are you doing? You all right? Um, today we're doing some, frankly, fairly unnecessary anatomy. I know I'm selling these videos hard, aren't I? Um, the other week, sorry, we did the superficial arteries of the face. Now we're going to do the deep arteries like I've promised. We're basically going to follow them in. The big question we're going to answer is how does the blood get from the very lateral arteries over here into the very medial deep spaces of the nasal cavity? We'll follow those arteries in. We'll see where all the branches go. So there's some fairly detailed anatomy here. We're going to be using this friend today. I haven't actually looked at this. Oh, you can see a lot on there. Um, so here we go. The deep arteries of the face. We've got some fairly serious naming stuff to deal with today, so I reckon we should look at a skull. We've got some really tricky three-dimensional things to deal with, which I might not... Well, some stuff I can't show you. Um, even on here, we'd have to take the skull apart to see some of the things. Have you guys been working hard in the lab? Have you been looking at your 3D physical objects, not just listening to YouTube from pillocks like me? Because that's not learning. That's not studying, this is, this is studying. Of course, if you haven't got access to these things, then I guess I'm more useful to you. Okay, so um, what are we really interested in? Well, I've taken off the veins. Um, so we're looking at the deep arteries of the neck here. And of course, we've got, we, we're starting, aren't we, from the arch of the aorta in here. And then we have this artery here. So, so here is the common carotid artery on the, on the left side. On the right side, it would be coming off the brachiocephalic trunk. We've probably done that somewhere else. I know my videos are a bit random and disordered, but YouTube is like the second biggest search engine in the world. Search my name and the topic you're interested in, and it should come up. Anyway, so common carotid artery ascends through the neck and then it divides here. This is the bifurcation of the common carotid artery into the internal and external carotid arteries. The internal carotid artery continues internally into the cranial cavity. This guy's cranial cavity is currently being repaired by Somso. Thank you, Somso. He had a bit of a fracture. Um, the external, ooh, the external carotid artery then is the one we're interested in that stays external and as we saw that supplies blood to the face we looked at all the superficial vessels coming off there but deep in here it's already difficult to see in there this guy in here that's the maxillary artery um, and the maxi this is this is the maxilla here right so the maxillary artery is the deep artery of the face and it runs deep into the face and it has it has three sections three parts it has a you know, we love naming things and describing things, don't we? It has a mandibular part, it has a pterygoid part, and it has a pterygopalatine part. Now, to understand what those words mean, we need to look at the skull, and then it becomes obvious, right? So, let's dissect deeply. Okay, so, <laughs> the mandibular part is the easy bit, right? This is, this is the mandible, isn't it? Do a little run through the bones here. There's the mandible, here's the maxilla, um, the ethmoid bone is up in there in the middle. We've got the orbit here, and uh, the posterior orbit, we've got the sphenoid bone, we've got the zygomatic bone, temporal bone, and that sort of thing. We, we've talked about the bones of the skull before. Now, the maxillary artery then is named as it passes kind of a bunch of structures. It is, it is sensibly named. So if I can take this mandible off. So, if at the back of the orbit here we have the sphenoid bone, the sphenoid bone is also very central around here. Now can you see these plates? Um, these these wing-like plates get called the, the pterygoid plates. There's a lateral pterygoid plate and a medial pterygoid plate on either side. Pterygoid does literally mean wing. Think pterodactyl, right? Not actually terror, it's terry, winged dactyly, right, winged bits between you. Off topic again, aren't I? Right, pterygoid means wings. We've got these wings of bones coming from the sphenoid bone. So that's the, these are your pterygoid bits. That's the pterygoid region. Um, now, this is the palate. The hard palate is made up of the maxilla anteriorly and palatine bones posteriorly. There's a little join there that you probably won't be able to see, you can't really see on here at all. Um, but the palatine bones, they're kind of, um, 
skinny pyramids, right? So they've got that flat base at the back of the palate, and then they do this kind of long, skinny, triangular pyramid thing pointing upwards, right? So if this is like the pterygoid region, and this is the palate, you can imagine that the pterygopalatine bit is around here. So there's, um, there's a groove in there. So between... So if this is the lateral pterygoid plate, of the sphenoid bone, and this is the lateral part of the maxilla here. We've got a groove in between the in the two there. There's like a depression. There's a fissure, a crack. And we've got lots of cracks and fissures and holes and spaces in the skull. We've gone through all the big ones, but there's loads in this little region here, which are really really difficult to see and work out what they are and where they're going. Now this this fissure between the pterygoid bone and the maxilla. Let's call that the Terigo maxillary fissure. That sounds like a sensible name, right? Stick all that in the textbooks. We'll call it, that's what we're going to call it, the Terigo maxillary fissure. Now, as we go more superiorly, that fissure becomes more of a fossa, it becomes deeper. And up at that end, really, you're up against the palatine bone. So we've got the pterygoid plate up against the palatine bone and we've got a fossa. Let's call that the pterygopalatine fossa, shall we? Because um, then everybody will know where it is, they'll remember that, nobody will forget that. <laughs> and then right at the top, in that foramen in there, now we're, we're kind of getting away from the pterygoid plate and we're getting up into the proper middle bit of the sphenoid bone. Um, and again, we're at the top of those pointy pyramidal palatine bones. So that, that, that foramen, that hole, we'll call that the sphenopalatine foramen, shall we? And that does, that does go places. So those are the bony structures that we're interested in. Given that knowledge then, here, here's the, the external carotid artery. This is then the maxillary artery going through here, and you can see how deep this is. We've had to take away bone, not just the soft tissues, but bone to get down to the maxillary artery. So it's a very deep artery within the face, and it has a number of branches supplying very deep structures. Um, in fact, some of those arteries go to the cranial cavity, and we've seen one before. We did a whole video on it, I think, and they go to the teeth and things like that. And you're interested in stuff like that. Um, now, the parts of the maxillary artery then, so the mandibular part is the part posterior to the mandible. That's what we've, is he on? So that's running posterior to the mandible. Muscles of mastication, we have, we have the masseter. Spin you around, buddy. We have the masseter. We've got temporalis up here, and then we have the two pterygoid muscles. We have the lateral and medial pterygoid muscles, and they go between the mandible and these pterygoid plates. So they're kind of, they're like in there. The one's a bit more vertical, one's a bit more horizontal. We've done a video on that as well. I'm gonna run out of stuff to talk about one day, aren't I? Probably not. Um, okay, so the mandibular part is posterior to the mandible, the pterygoid part then is going around the lateral pterygoid muscle, and then once, once the maxillary artery has gone past the lateral pterygoid muscle, then it's getting in here, it's getting in here deep, so then it's getting towards the palatine bone, so that's the pterygopalatine part. So it's not very long, but that's how we describe the three parts, mandibular, uh, part, then the pterygoid part by the lateral pterygoid muscle, and then the pterygopalatine part as it gets deep in here. Each one of those parts has a number of branches that go off and do a number of things. What are those branches? We'll take them chunk by chunk, shall we? So we'll get deeper and deeper. Okay, so the mandibular part is the first part of the maxillary artery, and um, that's the part that we can see here leaving the external carotid artery. Now it gives off a couple of smallish branches um, straight away. What have we got on here? Oh lordy. <laughs> uh, okay. So, right, I can see there are three branches here that are present. Now, um, the first branch is the deep auricular artery. This is the oracle, remember? So this is 
Um, the deep auricular artery isn't exactly going to the oracle, but it's going to the, the external acoustic meatus, right? It's going into the ear hole and supplying blood to that region, supplying blood to the outer surface of the tympanic membrane and stuff like that. And then there's another branch that runs very deeply. Look, yeah, we've actually, we've actually taken away the structures of the ear here to show the blood vessels. That's how close the blood vessels are. Look, there's the external acoustic meatus and there's the maxilla. It doesn't, these vessels are small, they don't have to travel very far, but they are very deep and dissecting them out is very difficult, so demonstrating them is very difficult. So the other artery going to the, the ear is the anterior tympanic artery, uh, and that is going to the, the tympanic membrane. And then we have, so this, this artery here, this is an artery we're very interested in. This is the middle meningeal artery. The middle meningeal artery is a branch of the first part of the maxillary artery, and it's actually going through foramen spinosum into the cranial cavity. So it's going inside the skull, and it's gonna run up. It's gonna run up, that's what, these red lines are here. It's going to run up the side of the skull, so it's going to supply blood to the periosteum and to the bone and to the meninges and that sort of thing. The middle meningeal artery is interesting because a blow to the side of the head here has a chance of, of tearing the middle meningeal artery and causing bleeding inside the cranial cavity, which is a bad thing, an extra dural hematoma, right, because it's outside the dura. So that's why the middle meningeal artery is interesting to us. So add your skull anatomy on top of this. And the next one then, which we don't see on here, because it's another little tiny one, is an accessory meningeal artery. Now, if you're looking at your cranial foramina, you'll see foramen spinosum is next to foramen ovale, and through foramen ovale runs the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. And that's what we've got here. That's what all these little bits are here. They're running down to this region here. That's going to innervate the muscles of mastication and it's going to carry sensory innervation back from the skin around here. Now the accessory meningeal artery runs back up through foramen ovale with the nerve there and it's going to also you know, supply the meninges and, and bone periosteum, that sort of thing. Any of these arteries, the stuff that they run past when they're traveling, they're probably going to supply blood to. So the, the accessory meningeal artery is also, for example, going to be supplying blood to the, the otic ganglion, which is just hanging down here. Oh, I bet we haven't done parasympathetic ganglia of the face yet, have we? That's another nitty gritty good one, that is. Solid anatomy. Um, also supplying blood to this large nerve, this large mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve as well. Um, so that's the accessory meningeal artery. And then the last branch of the mandibular part of the maxillary artery is this artery here. Very notable, this is the inferior alveoli, alveolar artery. I'm not sure why it's called alveolar. Anyway, the inferior alveolar artery is gonna run into the mandibular foramen, which then takes it into the mandibular canal. Not, not this here, this is the facial artery popping around, that's outside, but in here, right? See all the little, Little blood vessels run into the teeth, the little arteries run into the teeth. So the inferior alveolar artery is running within the mandible, sending off little branches to supply blood to the teeth. So when your gums bleed, or your lower teeth, that's your inferior alveolar artery, branches of that bleeding. And then eventually it pops out through the mental foramen here, supplying blood to the chin. That's the inferior alveolar artery. So alveolar kind of means, well, like it does in, in the lungs, kind of like, um, you know, like a sacky, sacculi shape. So I'm not sure why that gets called that here. Um, of course, if there's an inferior alveolar artery, there's also a superior alveolar artery. We'll find that as we go. We'll find that actually there's a bunch of them. So the next part of the maxillary artery is the, the pterygoid part, isn't it? Because it's going around that lateral pterygoid muscle. Now that artery, as it's passing close to the pterygoid muscle, remember that its branches uh, supply the muscles of, of mastication, right? Your chewing muscles. So it sends off a uh, temporal branch, deep temporal branches up here, deep to all of this, to supply the temporalis muscle and stuff in that region. It also sends uh, masseteric branches out to the masseter, which is nearby. That masseteric branch also supplies the temporomandibular joint as well. 
um, because that's a notable structure nearby, you know, it's going to be supplying blood to stuff nearby. And it also sends off uh, pterygoid branches to the pterygoid muscles because it's running right past them, so it'd be rude not to, right? Um, and then finally, oh, that's what this is, right? This, this branch here, this would be the buccal branch. And the buccal branch of the maxillary artery is going to run pretty much with the buccal branch of the facial nerve through the cheek. So it's going to supply blood to the cheek, to the inside, to the oral mucosa and stuff on the inside of the cheek, and also to um, the buccinator muscle and basically this part of the face. So it's a deep artery, but it's, you know, <laughs> overlapping with the job of the superficial arteries. So those are the branches of the pterygoid part. Tidy enough, right? Now, oh, this model shows it really nicely. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, and these guys. Oh, cool. Oh, that's so cool. Um, so in the last part of the maxillary artery, as we get into the um, pterygopalatine part of the maxillary artery, the first branch that we see here is the posterior superior alveolar artery. Right, so <laughs> there's an inferior alveolar artery, there's a superior alveolar artery. Oh, there is, and there's a superior posterior alveolar artery, there's a superior anterior alveolar artery, which we'll get to, and there's a middle alveolar artery in the middle, which like appears in the odd textbook image, but it doesn't even have a Wikipedia entry. It's, <laughs> it's, so, it's so minor. Um, but this here is the superior posterior, right, so anterior posterior, alveolar artery and look where it's going you can see again it's supplying branches to the upper teeth just like the lower the inferior alveolar artery was supplying blood to the lower teeth and what it actually does here is so it runs it runs um look this is what we've got here it, it kind of runs across the the maxilla here right because this is the lateral maxilla and then this is a cutaway of the lateral, so the maxilla is being cut away here. We can see the maxillary sinus and stuff, and then it's supplying blood to the teeth. That is so cool. Imagine how long that took to make, right? Um, then we have the, um, the infraorbital artery. Now it's kind of difficult to make out here because, of course, most of the orbit has been removed, but the infraorbital artery. All right, so the orbit, remember you've got the, the superior orbital fissure, which links to the cranial cavity, but you've also got the inferior orbital fissure, which look, links to, to this very region that we're in now with the maxillary artery, right? So the infraorbital artery can send branches up to the inferior part of the orbit and supply blood to the structures of the orbit, which it does do. But then it also, how can I do this on this model? Huh? I can. Oh, yeah. This is why you pay extra for your skulls. Because, <laughs> am I gonna do this? Here is the infraorbital artery coming from the maxillary artery and it's going up through the inferior orbital fissure to get to the orbit, but then it's running through the groove in the floor of the orbit and through the infraorbital foramen to pop out again on the superficial face. So the infraorbital artery is gonna take that really neat little root, little tunnely root to get out into this region of the face and supply blood to the superficial face. So that's the infraorbital artery, isn't that neat? And it's from the infraorbital artery that And that's what we're seeing here, right? The infraorbital artery is running around here. Now, and you see it's linking up to the angular artery and the superficial arteries of the face there. We, we probably talked about that um, last, the last time we looked at the face. But the bit we, the bit we, we kind of see the hint of some links here, but the, the anterior superior alveolar artery is coming from the infraorbital artery and it's dropping down here. Just me, or is that just like neat and tidy? And um, so we're getting quite close to the nasal cavity now. Now, can you see how the maxillary artery is continuing here and is getting into that? 
pterygo maxillary fissure and is moving towards the fossa and the foramen at the top. Now we're getting so deep, we're getting to stuff that we just really can't see. Um, we've got the artery to the pterygoid canal. And the pterygoid canal, um, also it's called the vidian canal, uh, because it carries the vidian nerve. And frankly, you're not going to find it on an intact skull. There are a whole bunch of like little cracks and fissures and tiny canals linking um, the spaces of the ear with this region here. Uh, and the, the pterygoid canal actually links the, the middle, middle cranial fossa with that region deep in there. But the, um, the artery of the pterygoid canal uses the pterygoid canal to get to kind of st structures deep in here. So the soft tissue structures um, that we'd have here. So look, this is the, the auditory tube, or uh, used to be called the eustachian tube, or the pharyngotympanic tube. So the artery of the pterygoid canal gets to the pharyngotympanic tube, um, it gets to the tympanic cavity, um, it's kind of getting into those, those spaces in there, it's getting into the, the mucosa of the pharynx, do you see? So it's kind of going through <laughs> there to get into there. It's very difficult to visualise. And then there's a pharyngeal branch, which is going to wiggle its way off and find, also find its way to the pharynx. Here's the nasopharynx here, here's the oropharynx. So it's going to find its way to the pharynx. It's also going to find its way up to the, the roof of the nasal cavity and stuff like that. So now we really are getting to the final branches. We're getting very, very medial. We're getting to the nasal cavity. So the last part of the maxillary artery. The other branch on here, which we can't see because it's going deep into all this stuff, is the, is, is the palatine artery. Or in fact, there are actually a bunch of palatine arteries. So this, this palatine branch is the descending palatine artery coming off the maxillary artery in this deep part. And then it splits into greater and lesser palatine arteries. And those guys are, of course, going to the palate. Oh, and that's what we can see here. We get this little bit of a bit of a loop. We get a lot of you know, links between blood vessels and what have you, but the, we've got the hard palate and the soft palate. So you've got the greater and lesser palatine arteries there. And they're associated with that, that palatine bone, that pyramidal palatine bone is the descending palatine artery runs down it to get to the palate. But the bit that we can still see here um, is the sphenopalatine artery, the last part of the maxillary artery, and that's going through that sphenopalatine foramen. Um, the sphenopalatine artery then, the last part of the maxillary artery, goes into that sphenopalatine foramen and really is getting up here it's getting very deep, it's getting very midline, it's getting into the nasal cavity. So it's going to supply blood again to the, the walls of the nasal cavity and also to the sinuses around here. The, the sphenoidal sinus in the middle, maxillary sinuses around here, that sort of thing, right? So this, so, you know, <laughs> um, right now it's, it's autumn. Uh, uh, the, we, we've got a lot of new students coming to the university, they're spreading their diseases and their upper respiratory tract, infe in tra tract infections. So in the next few weeks, the next couple of months, we're all going to get ill and poorly like we always do. Our noses will get blocked and we'll start producing lots of mucus. The reason our noses get blocked is because of the, the inflammation in the nasal cavity causes the blood vessels to swell and to become leaky and switches on the glands and the blood supply to the to the nasal cavity is largely is coming from the maxillary artery and a lot of those branches are coming from the the sphenopalatine artery at the very end of the maxillary artery it gets into the nasal cavity but the other little branches also contribute so that's why you get snotty that's why i can't breathe through your nose or can't breathe through one side because the the hole gets smaller and gets blocked so there you go that is how the blood from the external carotid artery laterally gets to the very midline structures of the deep face, the nasal cavity and that sort of thing. So in terms of how the blood gets to the nose for epistaxis, with nosebleeds and that sort of thing, it's relevant. Uh, middle meningeal artery, of course, is a blood vessel that comes up time and time again. Now you've got a better understanding of it. And the alveolar branches go into the upper and lower teeth. Well, that's important, isn't it, um, in terms of 
teeth stuff, right? Um, and the other bits there are, you know, for completeness sake. There's quite a lot of detail in there, but, um, but hopefully that was, that was useful. Hopefully you washed out with a cup of tea. Right now, get in the lab, do some work, all right? See you next week. <laughs>